number two, for financial reporting two, it's a percentage of completion problem. And so we're going to go through all the steps and go over some of the theory. But first, let's look at our information that we're given. We're given a contract price of 640000 We over a three-year contract. Actual construction costs incurred during the year are given to us. From there, we can figure out the construction cost incurred in prior years. So in 016, that's 185.6. In 017, that's 448. The 448,000 is the 262 plus the 185. If we were in year 2018, the cumulative cost would be 448 plus the 90. So the cumulative construction cost incurred to date would be 262 plus 185.6 gives us 448,000. 90,000 plus the 448,000 gives us 538,000. Estimated costs to complete are given to you in this problem. So estimated total costs are right here as simply addition of the cumulative plus the estimated cost to complete. Billings made during the year that's given to you in the problem and collect cash collections during the year given to you in the problem. The actual construction costs incurred during the year basically will be a journal entry right from these numbers. This is your monthly expense that goes on your income statement, which is a journal entry right here. First of all, this is going into your construction in progress account, which is an asset on the books, which later gets closed out. So that basically goes into two entries each year. Construction in progress, which is the asset, and we recognize it as an expense in construction costs every year. Now we're gonna review some of the requirements Compute the percentage of completion for each year. Compute the gross profit and revenue to be recognized each year. Prepare journal entries required. Prepare the T accounts for CIP and billings on construction in progress and accounts receivable. And determine net asset and liability for each year. So how do we compute cumulative percent complete? Simple. If you go into your PowerPoint slide, you'll see the formula laid out for you. But it is essentially the cumulative construction costs incurred to date. Operative word is cumulative, not current, but cumulative, meaning all the costs incurred for the contract. Don't think in terms of just dates and years here. Think in terms that this is a project, and all we really care about is how much costs are completed as in total to date. So the years really aren't that important. So in year one, it's 185,600, which is the first year. In year two, it's 448,000. But that's because we had 185,600 in year one right here. But we incurred 262400 in year two. Add these two together, and you get 448000 Estimated cost to complete in each year is then added to the cumulative to come with an estimated total cost. So to compute your cumulative percent complete, Simply take your 
cumulative construction costs incurred to date for each year, divide that by the estimated total cost, and you will get your percentage of completion. So 185,600 divided by 580,000 is 32%. 448,000 divided by 640,000 is 70%. And 538,000 divided by 538,000 means the job is complete, and that's 100%. And that's how you calculate your percentage of completion. Now, why are we doing that? Because we have to figure out how to recognize revenue. And we're going to recognize it based on the percentage of completion method. The contract price is given to you as 640,000. It's the same for every year. So, applying the percentage of completion for year one, which was 32%, we get $204,800. The project started in 015, so there's no recognized revenue from prior years. Therefore, the current year we revenue that we're going to recognize is $204,800. Less actual costs of 185,600 will give us a gross profit of 19,200. That's how you calculate gross profit. This will be journalized to revenue. The actual cost, which is here given to you in the problem, is your expense. The 19,200 gross profit or loss goes to the CIP account. So current year revenue gets credited to revenue recognized for the period. Actual cost gets debited as a cost expense and gross profit is debited or credited depending on whether it's positive or negative to the CIP account, cost in progress. In addition, the actual costs are also debited to cost in progress. Remember in your notes, the cost in progress account basically captures the costs, the actual costs in the project. It's basically we're creating an asset on our books as we produce this asset, which could be a bridge or a road or a building. So we're creating that asset. The billing throughout the year will go to an accounts receivable. The credit goes to this billing and construction and progress account, which is a contra asset, which you've learned about reading your PowerPoint or your text. That contra asset is then netted against the construction in progress. If construction in progress exceeds the billing in progress, we have an asset. Because what it means is we did not bill enough. Therefore, we have an asset because the customer is getting the benefit right now of more building that they more building or more project than they've actually paid so it's almost like a receivable they owe us more money for um, the construction and progress which is exceeding the billing conversely if the billing in construction is a greater than the construction and progress we're going to have a negative number essentially um, We've billed uh, too much, which means that it's almost like an unearned revenue here. It means that we owe the customer more project than that that we build. So 
It means we have unearned revenue. We have more project to complete. The customer overpaid. Therefore, it becomes a liability on the books. So we've gone over how to compute cumulative percent complete. We apply that to the contract price to get our cumulative revenue of 204800 so our current year revenue that we will recognize is 204800 Actual costs are 185600 Our gross profit is 19200 Our progress building is 290000 Our cash collection is 210000 We can now prepare all the journal entries we need. So let's go through that. Construction in progress is the asset based on the costs incurred for the period. So we're going to debit this by 185,600. Our cash materials or supplies are credited for the same amount. We build 290,000. We're going to basically create a receivable until we get paid for it. Our billing on construction in progress is a credit of 290000 which is a contra asset to the construction in progress. This account and this account are balance sheet accounts. The next entry is we got cash. We got paid. So we debit cash for 210 We credit our receivable, which has 290 in it. We got paid 210 we credit the receivable. Next, we record the gross profit in 2015, which we calculated here. We do that by recognizing our revenue and our costs and our gross profit. So that entry is basically revenue on long-term contract of 204800 which comes right from your schedule here. Then you're going to take your actual costs of 185000 right here and debit construction costs. So that's an expense. These two items are on your income statement. However, they don't equal. 204800 credit is larger than our construction costs. The difference is exactly the gross, gross profit which we determined here. Revenue minus expense equals our gross profit. That gross profit gets added to the construction and progress account, which is our asset. Asset. We've added 19200 to an asset. So if we look at our T account for 015, you're going to see that we recorded 185.6 as our actual expense, a debit of 19,200 for the gross profit gives us a balance of 204,800. Our billing in progress for 015 was 290,000, so the balance at the end of 015 was 290,000. How to present that on the balance sheet is as follows. Construction in progress, 204800. Billings on construction in progress, which is a contra asset, is a negative 290 balance. Gives us a negative, which is a liability. So we're going to present this on the balance sheet as a liability. Because um, we we build out more than we constructed. So our customer overpaid so far. So it's unearned revenue almost like. We still have more construction to do. We owe that customer more, more asset. So 015 is done. Going back to 016. Right from our table. Now we're going to use 70% to re basically recognize our revenue. 
Seventy percent of six hundred forty thousand is four hundred forty-eight thousand, but we do not recognize four hundred forty-eight thousand as revenue because we built two hundred four thousand the prior year. Again, we're dealing with accumulative totals, so we should be billing four forty-eight, but we billed two hundred four eight. So that leaves us. For the current year, we have to recognize revenue of 243200 The actual costs are 262400 These are not cumulative. Actual costs are the actual costs. Revenue minus our costs is a gross profit, or in this case, a gross loss of 192200 Progress billing is given to us as 320 so that's going to be our receivable and our billing account. And cash collection is going to be a debit to cash, credit to AR. We can now make our journal entries for 2016. CIP gets the actual cost of 262400 We credit cash, material supplies, and so on. Accounts receivable. We build out 320 on account. A billing on construction in progress gets the credit, which is a contra asset. We got cash for 290,000, which alleviates the receivable. Now record your expense, your revenue, and your gross profit goes to the CIP account. So revenue on long-term credit. Uh, contract is 243200 which is right here. And then the 262400 goes to the expense. We have a gross profit loss of 192200 that gets credited to our asset construction in progress. Looking at our T account for 016, we added 262400 in costs, but we had a gross profit loss of 19200 So we had a balance of 448000 which is exactly our cumulative construction costs incurred to date. What that is is simply the um, gross profit plus the actual costs being accumulated in the construction and progress. So our balance is 448. Billings on construction and progress started out with a credit balance of 290,000 from 015. We built 320 right here. So our 2016 balance is 610. These two counts get netted as a carrying value on the balance sheet. Carrying value means whenever you get carrying value, it's basically an asset or a liability uh, netted against itself, a contra. So how to present this on the balance sheet? Our asset is 448000 our billing on construction in progress, which is a uh, contra asset, is greater, so we still have a liability, which means we basically build out the 290 and 320 exceeds our cumulative costs. So we've slightly overbilled, so we owe this customer more work. Um, we're not really 100% complete. Going into 2016, 17, we are now 100% complete. Cumulative revenue uh, at 100% is 640, but we built 448 from the prior year. So subtract that, we have to recognize 192,000 of revenue. The actual cost of 90,000.
gross profit is 102,000. We progress built 30,000 and we collected 140. Once again, we can do all our journal entries here. So in 017, our actual cost incurred for that period goes to our construction in progress. We credit cash materials. Accounts receivable was billed for 30,000. Our contra asset billing on construction in progress gets a credit. We collected 140,000 in cash, so we debit cash, credit accounts receivable. And our gross profit entry is basically recognizing our revenue of 192,000, which is calculated here in our chart. Recognize our actual cost of 102,000. I'm sorry, 90,000, not 102, and the gross profit of 102,000, which is calculated here. So these three items basically get into our revenue, our expense, and the difference is gross profit, which goes to CIP account. right here then we go to our T accounts and we do our debits and credits for 017 we come up with a debit balance of 640,000 in our CIP account and a credit balance of 640 in our billing on construction they have to equal because in the end when the job is all done we have to bill for our costs but keep in mind we are putting the gross profit in with every entry for every year so the gross profit is also going in with the cost so the gross profit plus the cost is going to equal our total revenue so 640 is the debit 640 is a credit on our billing on construction we have to close these two accounts right here. We do that by debiting the billing account to make it zero, and we credit the CIP account to make it zero. And then in the end, we no longer have an asset liability on the books, which we shouldn't if we're 100% complete We've built, we've recognized all our revenue, and uh, basically the job is done and the accounting is done. So those are your one, two, three, four, five steps, which are fairly easy. Um, you should be able to do your uh, journal entries. They're all the same for each year. It's basically getting your schedule right. And understanding, the trick part here is understanding your revenue to recognize. It's based on cumulative minus the prior period's revenue that you recognize. It's basically determined that way. And getting your cumulative percent correct by using cumulative construction cost to date divided by estimated total costs. So I'll give you a chance to look this over uh, because you will have a similar pro similar problem at um, uh, for homework. Just the numbers will change. You might have some credits here and debits here, but the principles all the same. So these are your standard journal entries. And to show you how it's calculated, um, actual cumulative costs incurred to date divided by estimated total costs will give you your cumulative percent complete. 
from the schedule that you've done right here, you can now basically do your T accounts and your net asset liability. Um, you do your journal entries as well. So that summarizes basically how to get through this problem. It's comprehensive. It's not hard. You just have to don't don't speed go through this quickly. Take your time and understand the theory of what's going on. You've got a unique situation where you're recognizing revenue expense and you're creating an asset at the same time, which is only temporary for our books. Eventually that asset gets zeroed out. Thank you and I uh, wish you luck on this problem.